Many people don't really know about alopecia um, because it isn't uh, life-threatening. You're not going to get sick from it. So that's why doctors don't really go into that area at all and there's no advice or help whatsoever. Um, but people don't realise they haven't been affected by alopecia, how life-damaging it is. I founded the, Re the Rapunzel Foundation in 2012. It was due to um, a young girl that I met who had total alopecia. I have a wig fitting service, which is mainly for people with chemotherapy. But this little girl had total alopecia, would never grow hair. And I didn't realize somebody so young um, could suffer from alopecia. And I just thought, you know, we're a hairdressing salon, we can collect hair. And uh, when I went back and put it to my team, we said anyone who would give us hair would cut their hair for free. My mom died because she had a stomach cancer 11 years ago um, my mom loved her hair she um, uh, used it always longer than her hips when the doctor told her that she had a stomach cancer she was really afraid to lose her hair then one day so um, she decided to donate her hair when she got the chemotherapy treatment, uh, we heard about Fundacion Ross or Ross Foundation. Every year in June, they made a, a campaign to donate hair. And uh, in June 2000, 2013, I decided that I will donate my hair. So to donate the hair, when you arrive in the salon, um, preferably to have the hair um, shampooed and dried off and put into a ponytail and then measured now as I said it has to be 14 inches and then you can plait the hair or put an extra maybe two bobbins onto the hair and then you cut it above the top bobbin. The freedom weight start at maybe 3,000 on average I think that's the cost of them. Every time we get a ponytail an amount is paid into an account in New Zealand um, and it depends on the length and the weight of the ponytail and that money then comes back towards funding the wigs for people who need them so when somebody donates they're actually helping us financially then we send this hair to New Zealand when that hair arrives in New Zealand, it is actually taken apart strand by strand. So it's measured length by length. Even though it's 14 inches, some of that will be maybe 10 inches, 12 inches, 14 inches. And it's put into bundles of colour and lengths. But the beauty for the person is, it will not come off their head until they decide to take it off. I developed alopecia in May of 2009. My life before alopecia was completely normal like everybody else and normal worries about getting the kids to school, doing their lunches. My daughter is 11 and she's going to donate her hair to the Rapunzel Foundation and uh, she's really looking forward to doing that. It took me quite a long time to think about like what I would look like and stuff like that. So I went on the internet and had a look of people and so then I started um, I started thinking that I would like to. Well, I always love styling my hair, so I really miss that aspect because when I'm waiting for real hair to come, you have to wear synthetic hair, which is literally plastic. So you can't style it, you can't um, really put it up at all. Uh, it's very uncomfortable to wear as well, it's quite itchy. So that wasn't fun. So uh, when I got the real hair then I had a great time styling it and I've even coloured it. You can do anything with it. It's, it's exactly like normal hair. Um, it's on a suction cap so it's like um, it's like a prosthetic part of somebody. Say if somebody loses a leg it's, uh, it uses suction to stay on so it won't move, it won't fall off, it can't even be pulled off. You can do sports, you can go to the gym, you can go swimming and um, it won't affect it anyway. Well, I think when you develop alopecia, you just don't look in the mirror anymore. 
I took down all the mirrors for the two years I was losing my hair so they've gone back up since I got um, the hair donated to me.